Okay, today is very exciting for two completely different reasons. <laughs> Car seat out. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. A little bit of a rush, but I'm actually not late, which is cool. The first reason why I'm all excited, I'm going to the Electra EV show thing. Sounds like fun. So let's keep going. And the second reason I'm excited today is because Final Cut Pro X is actually brilliant. What's really exciting is how quickly it renders stuff. There's, I, I was, it was all going really well today. Now I have a small problem. Do you remember those giant hailstones that I didn't think did any damage to my car? See that? Oh, dearie me. To say that I am unimpressed, by those dents is an understatement. However, now it's plug-in time. Tell me about your fantastic conversion then. Well, our philosophy is, is to take classic car and convert it to electric. And from the outside, our intention is, is to keep it completely standard. Only thing that you can tell from the inside is the charge meter there. What's the um, output on the motor then of this? And what sort of range would you get? Uh, about 100 miles range. Um, at the moment, we've got a three kilowatt charge system on it, which we're looking about six hours from flat. We can put a seven kilowatt charge yeah. system on it, get down to three hours. We've got a 1303 Beetle at the moment that we're currently doing in the workshop, and we're looking at a Chadmo charger for that, so we should be talking. Oh, awesome! Yeah, should Chadmo! Be, should be talking 40 minutes. So you're talking, talking real electric cars then? Yeah, proper, proper charge. So no offence to the ones without quick charging, but it's I know. kind of a limit to how far they can go. I had a 24 kilowatt out in this Unleaf for a while, yeah. and I drove it to Scotland quite happily. Yeah. Yes. I stopped every 35, 50 miles all the way there, but I got there and it didn't take me a week or anything. It took me I don't know, 14 hours. Yeah. And to do that without quick charging, I'd still be at it a week later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the 1303, we're using gener first generation Tesla batteries that have been really? recycled out of um, the oh, brilliant. smart cars in America. And we're looking on the 1303 at 200 mile range twin motors, 0 to 60 in five seconds. Now we're talking. This is about eight seconds, eight and a half seconds. Still not too bad though. It's phenomenal. It's all about power density of batteries and charge The, ba the batteries are the, are the heart of electric cars, aren't exactly. they? Exactly. My dad's got a Morgan. Oh yeah? Yeah, he needs to get rid of it. <laughs> bit that makes the noise at the yeah, front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's what we do. We buy cars, convert them, sell kits. That's We've been going about a year now, and, and you know, we're, we're slowly building up a reputation and, and starting to get a client base together now. It's got a frunk. Off to see Bobby the Webber. Yeah, three D printed. Awesome. Can I just ask you a couple of questions? How many of you do not own electric cars? Excellent, <laughs> because we were aiming this event at you, Robert Llewellyn. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Oh, this is fantastic. So I spoke here two years ago in the foyer because that was and that was it was a few people in the foyer. There was half a dozen electric cars out in the car park, and it was lovely. It was a lovely sunny day, and it was very nice. And then we all went home, and that was it. And it was like a little event, a little local event. And today it's become this really rather overwhelmingly huge thing. Uh, one of the peculiarities, and I hope that doesn't say anything about either thing, is the amount of vehicles and special vehicles and conversions and bikes and scooters that are out in the uh, in front of the building that have been featured on Fully Charged or are about to be featured on Fully Charged is rather overwhelming. Um, quad bikes, the scooters, uh, the electric uh, Volkswagen Beetle conversion is an episode that will go out in about a week's time or two weeks' time. Uh, and so it's very, it feels very, very Fully Charged oriented. Which I find slightly worrying. And a lot of people come up to me today and said, You're the reason I bought my uh, dot dot dot. And I'm always anxious when I hear that because I'm expecting, and it's ruined my life. <laughs> my wife left me in my house, burnt down last night because the batteries aren't safe because Clarkson was right. 
So, you know, <laughs> now, we're in the very early stages of is a, is a very big transition from reliance on, on hydrocarbons, not just for uh, transportation, but for power, for electricity, for everything. And it's going to take generation plus, you know, most of us here won't live to see the end of burning fossil fuels, but there's no question in my mind that there's no question in an enormous amount of really clever people who do economics and engineering and science that that's going to happen, that we will stop burning fossil fuels. I think we should keep using fossil fuels, this is my argument, we should keep extracting oil and using it because it makes lots of really useful things that we don't burn. Uh, but I think burning it has to be a priority for the human race to stop burning it. I think that's the, the, the key thing that I feel very strongly about. The, the transition that we're going through I think is, is fascinating and it's, it's growing, I think, faster than I expected uh, rather than so. So obviously electric car sales are going up worldwide, they're going up very rapidly in this country, they going up, which is fantastic, and, the, and today is a great uh, example of that. And the car park that's down the hill, and not just outside here, is chock full of Zoe's and BMW i3's and lots of Teslas, a hell of a lot of Teslas, and I, there's no way I could charge there, but I did park my car next, in between, uh, 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 very close to a Tesla by using the summon feature, and it did work, because quite often when you want to show off for that, it won't connect and it won't do it, so I reversed my car into this space, there's no way an old man like me could get in that car, it won't open the door, so when I go back I'll have to summon it out, and if it doesn't work when I get out, it's going to make me cry. <laughs> But it does work most of the time. So I have a Tesla Model S now, I've driven on 20... I don't want to tell you because um, it's a, on a lease. Way over the limit. Um, I mean, they are remarkable vehicles, I'm sure uh, uh, Tesla owners here will testify. Um, horrifyingly expensive. It, uh, mine is leased and the lease is breaking me. And it was a very rash decision. I'll explain what happened. Um, my wife was on a multiple Skype call to our two children who are currently all at that stage, both in Australia. And um, um, they both, uh, I don't want to work at the Starbucks anymore, it's really stupid. Can okay, Dad send me some money? And then uh, my daughter goes, oh, I can't have made my rent. Oh, hey, uh, hey, you give me money. I hate you, I'm adopted. Just the way our children speak. <laughs> They're very well brought up. And my wife, my wife said, and I was standing next to her and she said, both of you get off your lazy asses and get a job. Your father's worked very hard for you all his life and he deserves a Tesla. She said that. <laughs> Thankfully, we had just about enough broadband for me to get on her iPad and order it there and then. <laughs> 200 miles, I now can say from experience in an electric car, means you don't think about range. So there's no such word as range anxiety with a Tesla Model S. I'll tell you what you can get, and I'm sure this affects gentlemen of certain age, I get bladder anxiety. So my bladder range is 145 miles out of time. <laughs> thank you very much for listening to me, because I have lots of fun. Interesting place to leave it. So now we get to watch Robert get his car out using the summon feature, we hope. So you've got an old gentleman to get in that gap there. It's very difficult, so I'm gonna wait to yes. make sure there's no one coming because I don't want to frighten people. Can I just say I totally approve of the colour. Great choice. It might do it, it might do it for me. It's doing it. Well done. Come on, love, you're alright. There you go. You're okay, keep going. There we go. I've got to say, that's awesome. <laughs> it's very nice when it's very satisfying when it actually, because quite often it's gone, oh, connection has been lost. <laughs> All right, thanks Brilliant. very much. Thanks very much. Right, Cheers. Bye-bye. Enjoy the talk. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> ah, fantastic. There you go, Soph. I've spoken to Robert Llewellyn now. You can relax. If I'm being honest, I've seen bigger boots. I love your daylight running lights on this. And what sort of stuff do you do? So EVs, EVs, for the most part. So this has got less wheels than I usually deal with. Sure, sure. Ooh, these are like, are those Nissan Leaf modules? They are, well spotted. Yeah, they're from a 2015 Nissan Leaf uh, that had an accident in Edinburgh. And uh, we went and got it from a salvage yard and persuaded the Nissan dealership to pop out the pack for us. So that gives you what sort of voltage? 80, 80 nominal. 80 nominal. Right. Yeah. And about how much the power capacity was to? Uh, 6 kilowatt hours. 6 kilowatt hours. So on a 
bike that is good for? 60, 70 miles. Bear in mind this is basically a test bed for drag chain. It's yeah, not, yeah. Not, not an everyday rider. Just no, I, I, I can tell it's a little bit sort of, what's the word? It started life as a Yamaha Phaser 600. Right. Uh, it's kind of a standard street bike, but you see loads of them around. As but doesn't look like there's an awful lot of the original bike left. Not a lot. So there's the double loop frame, yep. some of the subframe heavily modified, the swing on, the wheels, the forks, and the top yokes. Everything else uh, is. And what kind of fun can you have on this? Well, the motor can put up 140 newton meters peak, but right. we can't deal with that basically. Right. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll pull itself to bits at the moment. Right. So once we've put in a new uh, motor mount plate, um, we'll run it probably at about 80 newton meters of torque. Right, uh, and, uh, which I'm assuming is still going to be pretty. Still about 20 more than this bike originally produced. Right, uh, and it's about 50 kgs lighter than it used to be, so that'll be loads of fun. Um, wow. We want to get it road legal and start taking it to tracks. It might be quite interesting to do a sort of a more of a proper yeah, take on electric come bikes. Come visit the workshop by all means. Yeah. I'm not sure if that will be quite unquote proper, but it'll, it'll be. It's, what, it's our setup. I would chat to the Zero guys if you want to see a. a yeah, no. I'd much rather see something that's from the ground up, I think, <laughs> yeah. anyway. You know, because apart from anything, I'm not an actual bike guy. Yeah. I'm a car guy. Okay. You know, I drive a car, and I have no intention of driving a bike, and not to mention the fact that my wife would actually <laughs> kill me if I got a motorbike, let alone an electric one. But at the same time, we'll especially we... because this is quite a sort of an early stage development yeah. project, yeah. it's actually quite interesting to see you know what goes into it because other than the fact you've got half the wheels half the number of wheels you know the drivetrain is basically the same yep yeah. we'll have it running at the workshop as well so you can you can go up and down and we've got a nice little bit of a car park out behind that us. would be so cool in front of some garages now that sounds like a date <laughs> definitely they are planning on having a hot swap pack system yeah. so you go to the track day and you can just basically be riding all day long until you're arse out. <laughs> well that's the nice thing about doing these bikes is trying to kind of engage people on a little bit mm. more of an emotional level you're not thinking about like you know trees and you're not thinking about penny pinching it's it's, it's something that you, you actually look forward to getting on in the morning. That is the big uh, misconception that people have in my opinion about all things EV it's not about saving the planet. That is a nice to have afterthought. Yeah. The real point is it's fun. It's really fun. Aaron here. Well, what, tell your story. What's, what's so your... I, I am the uh, first Model 3 reservation holder in the UK um, with Tesla. I went to uh, Birmingham, Digbeth, and uh, reserved with Gilgel, the UK managing director. Also, the uh, Model S owners and Model X owners will be ahead of me in the queue. But... Technically, I am first. So there you go, a true celebrity. This has been cool. I've met loads of subscribers here. It's nice to see people rather than just seeing little icons. What a fantastic day. And now I just have to drive 155 miles home with at least one coffee stop. Look what I've just done. I need to get a coffee. That'll make me feel better. I can't believe I just almost snapped off my charge port cover. And it did break the reflector that's over the top of it. I mean, just, oh dearie me. Anyway, I'm feeling about a thousand times better now. Thanks for the coffee. So I'm gonna settle in for the long drive home, which just leaves me to say, I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to like it and subscribe if you haven't already and share it. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. The good news is, I made it back. Yeah. Not that I was ever expecting not to make it back. Coffee is amazing stuff. Firstly, Jasper would absolutely love that. And secondly, do I want to know how much it costs? No. <laughs> <laughs> Got a working front. Oh, that's just so crazy. Um, jump seats. Uh, the rear jump seats as well. It's like a giant just picked up an ordinary Model S. <laughs>